Hmm. We're back again. And the Xbox has failed. And the PlayStation is still king. Yes, I know we've been down this path before when I said the Xbox Series S. S. That was years ago. That was years ago. It was better than the PlayStation 5. Ah. But here we have the PlayStation Slim. We've got numbers. And it seems like PlayStation is doing everything right. Now, let's go back in time. So four years ago, or almost four years ago, both the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X and S were launched. It was a new dawn, new hardware, everything was looking good. And then we move forward in time, four years later, and we have some very interesting numbers. Now, before we get to those numbers, let's look at the hardware for both of them. The PlayStation 5, especially with the Slim now, has a smaller footprint, even though it's still larger than the Xbox Series X. Uh, but it does have some really cool features built into it. You've got, of course, USB Type-C on the front. Uh, two ports, which is nice. This also have, has Wi-Fi 6, which is better than the Xbox. And of course, you've got ports at the back. Now, the great thing about the PlayStation is that you can expand your storage on your own using an NVMe, as long as it has um, speeds up to 7,000 megabits per second. And I have an instruction video for you guys to check out if you want to do that. But it's a very simple process and it's pretty easy. You can do that on the PlayStation Slim and the PlayStation 5. It's both the same. Uh, structure. You can also customize the plates on the PlayStation 5 and Slim, giving you a unique style. Or with the Slim, you can detach the Blu-ray player if you want to, which is great. So a lot of cool customizations. Still a large console, by the way. Then we have the Xbox Series X, which is the big boy here. It's got this router look that people like to call it all black, really solid. It has expandable storage, which of course is through the uh, little SSD that you buy, either from Seagate or Western Digital, you slot at the back. I kind of like the design, it means you don't have to do any stress or work, but sometimes it can be pricey. Built in, of course, Blu-ray drive, while the Xbox Series S comes in either white or black, which we've covered on the channel here, and it's got a really slick look. It doesn't have a uh, disk drive and also has lower performance and power. But you, you get that. We all know what the performance and power is. So why do I say that the Xbox, this bad boy here, the Xbox Series X, S has failed? Or like, you know, they say in uh, Arrow, you have failed the city. Yeah, Arrow was good for like the first two seasons. After that, it was trash. But it's failed the city. It's failed all of us, right? So and how has the PlayStation succeeded? So let's look at the numbers and just kind of go back in time. So as of uh, December of last year, PlayStation has sold 50 million console units. That's this bad boy right here. While the Xbox combined has sold the Xbox Series X and S only 27.7 million units. That's about half the amount of units uh, for a lead from PlayStation over Xbox. Why is that the case when Microsoft is offering a cheaper option, way cheaper option, and also has different ventures? Well, let's start off with the main thing that PlayStation has that Microsoft still has not been able to figure out. Console exclusives. That's pretty much has been it. PlayStation has the single player console exclusives that everybody loves. Whether it's Ghost of Tsushima, whether it's God of War, God of War Ragnarok, uh, it's Spider-Man, one, two, Miles Morales, uh, whether it's Uncharted series, you know, one, two, three, four, five, you name it. I, there's no five yet, I know, but you get the idea. So PlayStation has a ton of these exclusives that a lot of people like to play. And then of course there is Call of Duty. Call of Duty is that game that also did really well on the PlayStation. We had exclusives come out earlier. There was some exclusivity that Activision happened and that also added to it. But you can see where the PlayStation does well. Now, Microsoft has tried to combat that by buying a ton of studios. They bought a ton, they bought uh, Bethesda, they've also just bought Activision, and we still haven't seen those exclusives come out. There are a couple of them which we're really excited for. Uh, things like Halo, which, you know, mm, the new Halo game just didn't really, really hit as well. And then games like Starfield, which was supposed to ignite and set things on fire on the Xbox, but didn't do that. But meanwhile, PlayStation has games like Helldivers 2, 
which is what we were looking for from something like Starfield. Some exploration, some courtiness, some spreading democracy across the galaxy, or you know, from Super Earth, you name it. That, that whole idea is missing from the Xbox. And right now, what it really seems and boils down to is the Xbox is missing a lot of key games that people would be excited for. Now, that could be remedied with what Microsoft has in store with all the different uh, studios that they've purchased, especially Activision. A quick note with the Activision purchase. Activision purchase and inclusion into Microsoft change the landscape for the Xbox division. It went from being one of the lower uh, earning units in Microsoft's uh, portfolio to being number three, passing Windows as of last year, all because of Activision. That's how much money Call of Duty makes. So just know that Call of Duty is a cash cow and Microsoft was dying to have that in there. Now let's move on to something else. Uh, Microsoft just talked about the fact that the Xbox is, it's meant to be um, everywhere, being able to access your Xbox everywhere and play everywhere. And they've done a really good job at that in comparison to the PlayStation. We have, of course, things like the Xbox Series X, which is the powerhouse that performs, matches the PlayStation 5. And we have the Xbox Series S, which is more of a, you could say, entry level into next gen gaming that costs less and allows people to still enjoy the games you want. Plus, we also have Xbox Game Pass, and this is where Microsoft had a little bounce in. Now, Xbox Game Pass allows you to play games on PC, console, and mobile devices, as well as also just standalone TV. So for instance, you can play Xbox Game Pass on your Samsung TV right now and access you know, a plethora of Xbox games. You can also do that and continue on your mobile phone. And then you can continue on your iPad, and you can continue on your PC or your laptop. This is something no one else does. You can't do that on a PlayStation to that extent, and you can't do that even on a Nintendo console. It's just basically a Switch, and that's pretty much it, right? You get that. So that is really cool. And what's really interesting there is that Microsoft's subscription numbers for Xbox Game Pass is quite impressive. As I mentioned earlier, Microsoft has sold 27.7 million Xbox Series X and S uh, consoles. They have 34 million Xbox Game Pass subscribers, which is a higher amount. And that is pretty cool until you hear what PlayStation has for its PlayStation Plus uh, subscription. Now, PlayStation has 47 million PlayStation Plus subscription users, which is higher than Xbox Game Pass. And also pretty close to the amount of people who actually have PlayStation consoles. And I think that's pretty much just only 3 million less, which means they've maximized that to the fullest. But to be fair, the breakdown is PlayStation has 33 million PlayStation Plus essential users. Then they have about 6 million extra users, PlayStation Plus extra. And then PlayStation Plus Premium has 8 million. Now, Premium is the version that allows you to do some streaming of older PlayStation games and select PlayStation 5 titles. Um, that is something that you can do. And streaming means streaming on your PlayStation console. We're not talking about necessarily streaming mobile, which you can to some degree, it just depends on what you're playing. Again, there's some caveats around it. You guys understand that you know this. So it still seems like PlayStation is beating them there, right? Mm, maybe yes and no. One thing I would say is that Xbox does allow you the freedom of moving from place to place and playing your games anywhere. That is something PlayStation can't do, and that's something um, Xbox has to capitalize on to actually push that momentum. Now, the other aspect that PlayStation is also taking things to a different level is um, <clears throat> portability, which is the PlayStation Portal, which is a console I have a love-hate relationship with because I haven't played it in about four months, but I understand the use case scenario. It's one of those things where you can stream your PlayStation games from your console to your PlayStation Portal. Now, why can't I just stream it onto my phone or my laptop? I don't know. Please, I'm not PlayStation. I'm just giving you what they, you can do with it. But it's a cool tool if you're a parent, meaning you have a, a young one, uh, they're watching Bluey or any of those shows, and you know they're gonna watch it forever. And you wanna play your game. And having something with a large screen, uh, direct connectivity to your PlayStation, like the PlayStation Portal, absolutely works and makes sense. I think that's pretty cool. But Microsoft says, well, hey, look, you still have your phone. You can do that on your phone. You can take your iPad. You can do anything you want to and still have that kind of gaming experience. 
So the question here is this, since PlayStation is clearly beating Xbox, what does Microsoft need to do? We've kind of mentioned a few of them. They need first party games, but not just first party games. The distinction here is PlayStation is the home of first party, what? Single player games. That's what we play. All the games I mentioned from Ghost of Tsushima down to um, Spider-Man, Miles Morales, all of them are single player games. The Xbox is the land of multiplayer, Xbox Live, Xbox Game Pass. That's where multiplayer lives and Microsoft should capitalize on that. A game like Hell Divers 2, I stress Hell Divers 2, it's a fun game. Should be an Xbox game, not a PlayStation game. I'm not saying the game itself, but a game like that should be. And we need to see more games like that that can show up on the Microsoft console. We also need Microsoft to emphasize the fact that, look, they want you to play everywhere. So basically, I know you have a deal with Samsung, with Samsung TVs, but I need to be able to stream my Xbox games on any TV out there that I can download the app. I wanna see that freedom of movement. And maybe we'll see even a portable Xbox which I think to me is the biggest thing, a portable Xbox console. The reason I say this is Phil Spencer had mentioned about a month or two ago at GDC that he would love to see Steam on the Xbox console, which to me uh, leads the way to a portable Xbox, which might be interesting and might help combat some of the things you find with the PlayStation. Now, I'm not saying that's gonna help them, but I think it would be worthwhile. And then there's, of course, the PlayStation 5 Pro, which is rumored to come out this year, which would give you an increased performance of what you're getting with the PlayStation currently right now. Now, some people are debating that that is only going to give you better performance on HDR gaming. Uh, and yes, Sony might be expecting 4K60, but it might not be enough. So you counter that with what I talked about with the Xbox Portable. That may be a battle of attrition, but you know, PlayStation owners will still buy a PlayStation product. Keep that in mind that the backbone has a PlayStation controller. When I did a video on that on TikTok, I think I hit like 30 million views or something. It's incredibly crazy how PlayStation fans love the brand. But for now, all hail the king called PlayStation, Xbox, my foot's on it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>